Okay, we're ready to wrap up this unit, but we've been spending a lot of time talking about indefinite integrals. And if you remember back in the beginning of the unit, we talked about both indefinite and definite integrals. Indefinite integrals give you a function or a family of functions as a solution. Yet definite integrals gives you a value or a number for a solution. So if capital F of X is an antiderivative of lowercase f of X, and lowercase f of X is continuous on, on some interval where X is between A and B inclusive, then one of the forms of the fundamental theorem of calculus told us that the integral from A to B of little f of X dx is going to be any antiderivative of little f of X evaluated from B at B minus the same antiderivative evaluated at A. And then we had some properties of definite integrals that we've used. And one of them says if you switch your limits of integration, then you change the sign of your integral. If you're doing the integral of a constant times a function, you can move that constant outside the integral. You can split up an integral. So if you're doing an integral from A to B plus the integral from B to C, that's equal to the integral from A to C. And then also, if we're doing the integral of the sum, or actually difference of two integrals, then that equals the sum or difference of the individual integrals as well. All right, so let's look at a few examples to make sure we remember how to do the notation and how we work out some of these definite integrals. So this is saying evaluate the integral from 0 to 4 pi over 3 of sine of x dx. Now one way you can think about this is it's asking what's the area between the sine function and the x-axis between 0 and 4 pi over 3. So we start off by finding the antiderivative of sine of x which is the opposite of cosine of x. And then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 4 pi over 3. Now remember, the antiderivative, it's a whole family of functions. So some people might ask, well, why not? It's the opposite of cosine x plus c. Well, the c's are going to wind up canceling out anyway. So you don't need to write, you can just like c equals 0. All right, so we have that. So now I... I I've said this before, you should use parentheses when you're evaluating. So let's put a set of parentheses and let's plug in 4 pi over 3. So we have negative cosine 4 pi over 3. Close that parenthesis. Minus, and then another parenthesis, negative cosine, and we plug in 0. And notice, we won't make mistakes if we have the extra parentheses, especially because we're subtracting here. All right, so now we have to go back to our unit circle. And what is the cosine of 4 pi over 3? That's in the third quadrant. That's the 60 degree reference angle. So the cosine is negative 1 half. So this is going to give you the opposite of negative 1 half minus, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so minus the opposite of 1. So these are all pluses. So we wind up getting 3 halves. All right, let's look at another example. How about the integral from 1 to 3 of x times e to the x dx? So what's the antiderivative or any antiderivative for x e to the x? Well, there's a lot of techniques of integration that we haven't learned yet. And so there's nothing that we've learned so far. U substitution isn't going to help us. You can't just stare at it long enough and the answer will magically appear. So this is one that we need some more techniques of integration to actually do by hand. So for now, when we run into a problem like this where we don't know the antiderivative, and later there'll be some integrals where there isn't any elementary antiderivative, we're going to have to use technology. So on the calculator, you're going to go to math and do fn int. You can do it from the home screen, or you can do it from the graph. Your choice. If you're on the graph, you would press second trace into the, get into the calculate menu. 
and then you put in your limits of integration, which are the lower limit first is 1 and the upper limit is 3. And then you get your answer, which is an approximation, so 40.17 is approximately the area under that curve and above the x-axis. So if you're not too familiar with using the calculator for this, I'd hit pause, go ahead and try it yourself, make sure you get it to work correctly. All right, let's look at another example. Now this is slightly different, and even though it's different, if you have the understanding of the concept behind a definite integral, you should be able to do this. So find n if the integral from n to 6 of 2x minus 1 dx is equal to 24. So we're missing the lower limit of integration, but we know what the answer is supposed to be. So what do we do? Well, let's just work it out like we would normally. Find the antiderivative, the antiderivative of 2x minus 1 is going to be x squared minus x, and we're evaluating from n to 6, and we know the answer should equal 24. So first I'll plug in the 6, and we'll do 6 squared minus 6, and then minus, plug in the n, n squared minus n. Okay, so you can see that we're going to have a quadratic, which means we may have two solutions for this. So when I simplify this, I get negative n squared plus n plus 30 equals 24. And I'm going to move the 24 to the other side and then divide everything by a negative 1, so my n squared is positive. So I'm going to get n squared minus n and then I will have a 6 will become a negative 6 equals 0. Well, we can factor this one. If not, we would use a quadratic formula. And this factors very nicely, n minus 3, n plus 2. So we get two solutions, n is equal to 3 or negative 2. So that's telling us that when we do the integral, let's switch here, the integral from negative 2 to 6 of 2x minus 1 dx, that should equal 24, and also the integral from 3 to 6 of 2x minus 1 dx should equal 24. Now we can use our calculator and verify that, we'll do that in a second, but does this seem to make sense? How could the area wind up being the same from negative 2 to 6 as it is from 3 to 6? Well, think about what this function looks like. This is just a line, slope of 2, a y-intercept of negative 1. So if I move my lower limit of integration all the way over to negative 2, part of that amount between the x-axis and the graph, it's going to be under the x-axis, so it'll be a negative amount. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look and see what that gives us. All right, so we're going to put in 2x minus 1, and zoom 6. Looks nice. Now I'm going to do second trace. We're going to do number 7, the integral. Lower limit, negative 2, enter. Upper limit, 6, enter. And as you can see, there's some negative amount which takes away the positive amount that's above the x-axis, and we get 24. Now let me clear draw. So I went to second program to the draw menu. And I'm choosing number one, clear draw, so it takes away the shading. And now I'll do the same process again, except this time I'll do it from 3 to 6. And once again we get 24. Okay. So now you should be ready to do the problem set from 18H.